Hi there, and welcome back to Mr. Sword Thumb. Before I start this video, I'd like to give a really shout out to a friend of mine who actually gave me this name, Mr. Sword Thumbs. Um, I can't mention his name right now because he's the one who's holding the camera, so I won't completely mention his name. I won't embarrass him. So, what is on my mind? And first, you're wondering why I'm wearing a shade because this is a special, this is a special, special sort, Mr. Sword Thumbs. Um, well, actually, I'm just thinking, what makes gaming? Well, we all play games, but what makes a really good game? Sequels. Sequels and video games. That's what I've been thinking over the summer. Because, let's face it, we all been to that little point in our lives and say, Wow, one was great, two was great, three was great. Because what I'm talking about is video games. Because every sequel in video games start with one sequel. And then move up to one and two. Now, for me, being where I am, Mr. Gamer, or... Mr. Storytelling to most people, I like to see myself playing, well, if I'm playing a sequel, I want to know the sequel is going to be good in the second one, or the third one. And sometimes there are good misses, good tragedies, and just want to scratch your head and think why they did that. So on the side of my, on the side, I have a couple of games that I will show that would be great, awesome, and sometimes just wondering why they did that. So first on the first off, I will show you the Sly Cooper series, and you see all three of them, all sequels, one, two, and three. What makes the Sly Cooper series so a great game is they don't change the formula. When I say formula, I don't mean they add a new character or change it because, you know, they wanted to do. No, they kept, they kept the formula fresh in all the sequels because I played it a couple of times. I played actually all three of them, and it's actually great, and they don't change it, you know, except for the third one, as you see right here. Oh, sorry, uh, that's number that's number two, sorry. The third one, right here, you see that they change it a little bit, change the look, but they still keep it really good. And I really like it because, um, why? Because it makes a good sequel. And when make a good sequel, go, you go back out there and say, wait, I'm waiting for a good sequel to come out. And it is a good sequel coming out. But sometimes, as I say, sometimes a good sequel can be a great sequel. The next name up in my list is, and I have to say, all oh, the Resident Evil series. One, two, and three. Yes, this is a train. One, two, and three. Because why? Because let's see, let's see to me what makes a good game. What makes a good game is character development and storyline. Now, in character development in the first Resident Evil, you are a, you are a SWAT team. Oh, that game was going on in the mountains, and you go into a house, and when you get into the house, all hell breaks through. You got zombies, you got monsters, you got God knows what coming at you. Now you're wondering what makes the sequel better than the first one. Sure, we all play the Resident Evil one, and we, we do laugh about the corniest joke and the really lame dialogue, but we say okay, they they know from their lessons and they move on. Now part two is my part two is my favorite because why make part two? Because part two leads off, as I say, same environment but different different direction. In this case, the in this case the zombies are getting a lot smarter, a lot the more monsters, and it's a twist plot. So you basically if you have played part two, you know what I'm talking about because if you have two discs, you can play back and forth, but it's still great. And part three, well we all know what happened in part three. More zombies, more monsters, and the time blows up in your face. So as I say, don't change the it, it's not changing the formula, but adding more to the the scene of the game that you feel like wow they really really kept up. But sometimes, let's face it, sometimes it's a miss and a, really a mishap when you do a good game. Now for me, I'm a big fan of Metal Gear Solid. And on the side of me, I have a Metal Gear Solid series. Now, you're know, wondering why I don't have two. Because it sucks. It sucks balls. I, I never liked it. Uh, I like part one because the storyline was simple, fresh, kept you going. Part two, well, I have more complaints in part two than you never hear. How can I put this? They put Ryan. Hope I'm saying his name right. Ryan. He is the most lamest, whiniest, Complaining, I ever seen in my life. In the ending of the, when you get to the very end, he doing cartwheels, butt naked. Yes, that's for me. That to me was the frighteningest. Well, I can't even describe anything else. It was just frightening to see him doing cartwheels, butt naked, and trying to be serious. And you know, and then part three leads off with big boss. Now it's not snake, but it does jump off 
to saying, hey, you know what? Why they did that direction? Why did this catch Snake in the first, the, the second one, but they changed the whole character? And then sometimes we get to this one feeling like, okay, because they want to see a new character. Wrong. That's the thing about secrets. You don't want to see another character change. The idea that the character gets more, get more difficult, and the storyline gets more difficult, and it actually gets more difficult. We just went to another disaster. It wasn't actually a disaster, but mostly a scratch in the hand saying, My God, are these people on drugs? I have to say, it's the infamous Devil May Cry series. Now, once again, you see I don't have part two because, let's face it, it sucks awful. It is the most worst sequel of video games. And I have to explain that. Part one, as you see right here, it was amazingly good. You do a lot of cool stuff in the game, and it was kind of like a new fresh and run. Fresh, fresh game look. Now, in part two, for some odd reason, they changed the whole feel of it. They give uh, the character a new shade of look, less weapons. You know how bad it is? I'll tell you how bad it is. Go to any YouTube site, click them May Cry, and I will bet you for a buck, the boss fights are way easy, so easy that you want to scratch your head. I paid this much for it. Yeah, it's kind of sad, but as I say, the cries our gamers was cried throughout the world, and they made a sequel. They would make Cry Three. Now I have a special edition, but it's still Part Three. But they changed what they did in Part Two. Don't make it sucks, and they and they did it. I mean, it's completely hard. Don't get me wrong, but it's just not like Part Two. Trust me. If you see Part Two, I advise you to stay away from it. But that's the thing about sequels in video games. It's not more like, you know, I'm waiting outside. Because let's face it, nowadays, as this game market being over mentally big, game developers are going out, out just to make a sequel to make it good. You know what I'm talking about. When I was growing up, I didn't care about sequels. I just cared about the gameplay and that was it. But now, with people pumping in money into the developers saying, hey, we gotta make a sequel, we gotta make that good game. You're wondering yourself, wow, should I be waiting for the sequel or should I just wait it out? And sometimes it's good because you want to hear what the views are. Because when I was growing up, I had the, the power of the internet. I just had word of mouth from friends or the magazine or just dumb luck of a, a person who had the game. I'd look at it and say, okay, well, I'm making a part two and then how part two is going to be. But to make it make it clear, I'm not hating on sequels. I'm hating on sequels. No, that's not that's not the case of it. I love sequels, but just make it right to me to go back and say, wait, maybe they changed the character or they changed the the feel of it. Because really, because sometimes you're wondering, wow, I spent this much money on this sequel, and you're wondering why I did it. Sometimes you gotta be scratching your head. But I got another game I'll show you. Actually, a special game that I really hope it comes out soon for the PS3. That is Zone of Ending. I hope I'm saying that right too. Zone of Ending have to be the best out of the um, history of gaming I ever played in my life. Why? Because let's just let's just take a step back. Now, part one, part one was kind of neat because it had a different look. Oh, before I say that, Kojima, yes, we all know who is the who is the brainchild of the Metal Gear Solid series, created um, Zone of Ending one and two, and you know it's no three. I'll get to that in about a couple of minutes. Um, what makes Zona ending in part one is it was great, the storyline was kind of like off and end, but you felt like it was a new step to gaming, and I like it, and I play a little bit off and on, but when I heard a sequel of Zona ending part two was coming out, I was kind of hesitating, saying, okay, how are you going to do it part one, kind of make it a little bit slower, a little bit faster, and man, two really went beyond and beyond than ever I ever seen in my life, because it was great. Storyline was kind of choppy sometimes, but the gameplay itself was good. That's what I like about sequel. Trying to give me something different. It was different from the first one and different from the second one. And you know that there's no third one because Hajima, somehow in some way, is still doing Metal Gear Solid. Well, I got nothing against Metal Gear Solid. I just want to see Hajima work on Metal Gear Solid. But it was rumored, now this is only rumor, and I'm only seeing it through the internet, that he he may be directing the Zona ending part three and the hope is really good. I hope it's no rumor and I hope it's still three so I can show all three boxes here. And what that what that said to me being as a gamer is yeah sure you can get you can um 
you know, have a word of mouth thing, you know, I don't like sequels, they might be sucked, they might be boring, but sometimes you have to, like, look at it in a certain way, because if it wasn't for sequel, game developers won't go back and say, oh, we can make this tweak, we can make a little tweak to the character, we can make him talk, we can make him have a, a personality, or we can just make him a completely a different person, but still put the same person in the game. And that's, what, that's what's wrong with sequels nowadays, you know, sometimes, like, I'll give you a good example. Uh, like the Halo series. Now we all been on that line. Well, not me, not me. Um, no, no, I've never been on that line. But I seen it on the trailers, and I seen it in YouTube saying that you know people are waiting online for days on end just to get their sequels for the Halo console. When they got the game came out, the game was great. People still complain about it. They went back. Tweaked a little bit, and then part two came out. I still saw the people sitting online, waiting, all cheerful and happy, want to get the Halo on. They got the Halo. Two was good, but they still need more tweaks. Three comes out, still the same people online, waiting, them geeks and nerds. They just like, you know, foaming from the mouth, waiting to be that first one in line to hold their hands on the Yes, they got it! And then they got it, and... You know, that's how it is. You know, it just... Sequels and video games are what it is, you know, the money-making process of gamer, developer, and everyone else in between. And sometimes I can, you know, say to myself, hey, well, you know what, if this is a sequel, make it the sequel. Make, it, make me go out and get it. Don't make me go out and spend whatever I got just to get disappointed. As I said with the Devil May Cry 2, don't get it. You know how bad it is to get stopped to a game store one time, just right out of the blue, saw about five copies of Devil May Cry Two for only six dollars, and it was stacked. It was stacks and stacks of them may cry. I'm looking at them myself. I'm like, wow, this sequel sucks. I mean, who wanted to get part two? It just blows. And you know, that's how it is. You know, sometimes it can be a hit, it can be a miss, or you should, or you can please just don't touch it. So for the, my final for my final announcement, well. To be a to be a true gamer is to wear it out. Wait to hear the review. Nowadays we have the internet, we have a magazine, we have people who played it, we got reviews. Just wait till it comes out. So you can go run into your game store or run into your local hole in the ground and get your copy and enjoy. So for this final note, it's good for sequels, but be warned, don't be warned for me or be warned for anyone out there who's looking at this, don't be that hyper because part one was good or part two could be great or part three can be really wonderful or hell part one can be like part two or it can be part three I have no idea what I just said because I really love sequels so next time you see me next time put a comment down below as usual and I'll hopefully wait for your response next time keep on gaming and see you later